Welcome to Iron Hand Tech Channel. Did you just get yourself the latest smartphone? Or maybe you've replaced your old college laptop with a brand new one. Now, you're wondering what to do with those old devices. And before you know it, the trash can becomes their final resting place. And just like that, they've turned into e-waste. E-waste includes all electronic products that are discarded after reaching the end of their useful life, such as phones, computers, TVs, batteries, and many other devices. In short, if it has a cord, a battery, or needs to be plugged into work, it can become e-waste when it breaks. So, what treasures are hidden inside these devices? Let's take a laptop as an example. A typical laptop contains a circuit board made from fiberglass and precious metals like silver and gold. Aluminum and magnesium are used to make the frame, distribute power, and manage heat. Any modern laptop will use lithium in its battery to store energy. The screen, keyboard, and outer casing could be made from plastic. That's a long list of resources, and we haven't even mentioned the packaging, instructions, or the logistics involved in delivering the product to the end user. You see, when we toss an old electronic device into the trash, it's like throwing away a treasure chest and those precious metals inside. If not handled properly, they can become some of the most dangerous waste humans have ever produced. For instance, each smartphone contains about 0.034 grams of gold. That may sound like a small amount, but if we recycle millions of phones, you'll have quite a stash of gold. In fact, extracting gold from e-waste is much more efficient than mining it from ore. Let me share an interesting fact with you. Every year, the world generates over 50 million tons of e-waste. That's equivalent to about 4,500 Eiffel Towers. Can you imagine? And only about 20% of that is officially recycled. The rest? Oh boy. Let's not even start on where it goes and the harm it causes, but trust me, it's not good for the environment. So how can we recycle them safely and effectively? Today, let's dive into this process together. First comes the collection stage. This can be simple or complex, depending on how developed the e-waste management system is in each country. In some places, people can bring their e-waste to collection centers or electronic stores that have take-back programs. However, in many developing countries, e-waste is often sold to small, informal recycling facilities. One of the biggest challenges at this stage is consumer awareness. Many people still don't understand the importance of recycling e-waste properly, which leads them to toss e-waste together with household trash or, worse, dump it in uncontrolled landfills. After being collected, e-waste is transported to specialized recycling facilities to begin the sorting process. Here the devices are dismantled and sorted into categories, plastics, metals, glass, and more complex electronic components. This is crucial because each type of material requires different recycling methods. Is sorting complicated? You bet. You might think it's as simple as separating plastic from metal. But the truth is, Electronic devices are often incredibly complex, with components welded and tightly bound together. Dismantling them requires automation technology and even manual labor. Now comes the exciting part, the actual recycling process. After e-waste has been sorted, it goes through a series of mechanical and chemical processes to recover the materials. First is the shredding and separation phase. Shredders break down the electronic devices into tiny fragments. 
Then using magnets and eddy currents, the metals are separated from the plastics and glass. A large magnet is used to remove iron-containing materials like stainless steel. An electric current is passed through a coil to create a magnetic field, which makes conductive materials like aluminum move. Did you know that recycling 1 million phones can recover approximately 16 tons of copper, 350 kilograms of silver, 34 kilograms of gold, and around 15 kilograms of palladium? This is a fantastic way to harvest precious metals without having to mine for them. Not to mention, it also reduces CO2 emissions from mining activities. To recover these precious metals thoroughly, we need to use complex chemical processes. One of the most common methods is hydrometallurgy, where electronic fragments are dissolved in chemical solutions, allowing us to extract gold and silver effectively. Of course, this requires strict controls to avoid pollution. Don't worry, we're not advising you to try this at home. While it might sound like a fun chemistry experiment, these chemical solutions are very dangerous if not handled properly. Recovering materials is the heart of the e-waste recycling process. Once the materials are sorted, they are sold in bulk to other companies for recycling. For example, plastics are sent to plastic recyclers, who further sort them by type and color before turning them into pellets. Metals like steel, aluminum, and copper are received by metal workshops where they are accumulated in large quantities. They are then transported to smelters, refined, and eventually turned into ingots for use in future products. Precious metals like gold and silver can continue to be used in the production of new electronic devices, completing their life cycle. Of course, like any complex process, e-waste recycling faces no shortage of challenges. One of the biggest challenges is managing hazardous substances, such as lead, mercury, and other toxic compounds found in many older electronic devices. If not handled properly, they can seriously harm human health and the environment. But it's not all bad news. Many countries are now implementing extended producer responsibility policies, which require manufacturers to take responsibility for collecting and recycling their products after they've reached the end of their life. Additionally, safer chemical processing technologies are gradually being developed to minimize environmental impact. So what can we take away from all this? E-waste recycling isn't just a solution to reduce environmental pollution. It's also an opportunity to recover valuable resources from items we thought were trash. Instead of letting old phones and broken laptops gather dust in drawers, remember that they still hold value. And if handled properly, they can help protect the environment and conserve resources. We have a responsibility when it comes to our e-waste. So the next time you're about to discard an electronic device, consider recycling it. After all, as you can see, behind every old phone is a new story, a story of rebirth. What are your thoughts on this issue? please let us know below in the comment section. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe so you don't miss the next interesting videos. For now, goodbye and see you again.